In this lesson, we're going to look at the loft function, which is another way of creating a solid object from some sketches. And the way this kind of works is I think of it is actually being like a tent. Um, so essentially, you, you set up your tent poles, two sketches, typically that oppose each other and are actually parallel, as you can see here, a square and a circle. And then, in a sense, stretching a tight skin over it, ending up with something that matches the two shapes and kind of blends in between. So in order to do that, we need to have two, two sketches that are parallel to each other. So far, we've only used this base surface, really, for sketches. But we have seen how we can actually use the side of, a, of another shape, say a box, to stick a sketch on there. So I'm going to actually sketch myself a rectangle, just like we did in the last lesson. And I'd say it's going to be that big. So with that, with the sketch, I'm going to extrude and just actually pull it up. So now we've made kind of our base object something that's sacrificial. So now what I want to do is I actually want to use the sides as a kind of as a donor. So right here, I'm going to place a rectangle. Okay, so now I need to go to the other side. I'm going to make my circle. All right. Once I'm done with that, press escape. And now I want to actually loft from the circle to the square. With that, and I also want to get rid of all this extra material in the meantime. So let's just go ahead and select loft. And so remember how we used intersect to get rid of all the spare to trim the fat. And so I'm going to click on this shape first. Now I need to go around so I can directly see the square. Click that. And it's done. So click in a blank space. And now I have essentially a blended shape. So you can imagine maybe this would be like a piece of ductwork in a house. It went from a round pipe to a square outlet. So let's go ahead and try another way of actually lofting something. So let's make, let's say we're going to make a flower vase. So a new document, don't save. So I actually want to, I want to use more than one shape in order to be able to stretch the skin over that. So, a fairly easy way to do this is, let's start a circle here, and just click on it. Okay, so now let's say that I actually want to take these circles and add kind of a stack of them, one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to select it, I'm going to hold Command C and Command V, so to copy and paste it, and once I paste it, you can see here, I've actually got another ring that's popped up, or another sphere. So now I have two. So that's cool, but I want to do more. Command C, Command V. Drag one up here. Command C, Command V. Oops. Copy, paste. Let's see what I get here. Okay. So let's have a little bit of fun with this. I want to, let's say on this top one, I actually want to scale this circle up. So I want the opening in my vase to be larger. Click in an open space. I also want to do that with this one. Just a little bit. But then let's also say, move it around. So I'm gonna make this off center. Now I actually want to loft and stretch my skin across all four of those circles. So the best way to do this when I'm doing more than just two things is actually to select these first, make sure everything's blue, and make sure that you go in order. Go up here, click loft, and you can see it's actually stretched, stretched a solid object over the circles that you gave it. 
So this is a really cool function in the sense that you can create very, very hybrid flowing objects and it's something that uh, uh, it's good to add to your toolbox as you as you move along looking for how can I build an object with symmetry uh, and which tool do I get to use. So let's just do one more experiment with the loft function. Um, I actually want to make an airplane wing. So the unique thing about an airplane wing is it's kind of a complex shape and the inside and outside of the wing, the wing tip and whatnot, are different sized and different shaped. So how can we draw those two kind of uh, fairly specific shapes without uh, them coming out distorted or the wing being crooked. So, knowing that we could always rotate a drawing or move something, let's, uh, let's just make our drawing on the plane that they give us. Now, Essentially, how are we going to draw the shape of a wing? The best way to do it is with the spline tool. And with the spline tool, now we've got a drawing plane. And so let's just start let's just start dragging splines, see what happens. And you can see that they kind of all blend together. Now as I'm placing these, I know that I can I can move things later. So here's what I started with for a wing. It's not looking very good. So I'm done with that. Let's start dragging these around. See what we can get. Actually, I really like that one. So, okay, so that's one side, but we need another wireframe, another sketch with which to stretch the skin across. So how could we do that? I think I'm going to actually try like with our last face. Command C, Command V, and copy another one. And then now you'll see that I have an identical an identical shape. So now it looks like I can actually, if I get into the right position here, get a hold of that, I can drag this wing shape around. So for comparison, let's actually try lining these up. So you'll see here that they're lined up. Now, if these things don't look right, what is probably happening is with this little button here, there's a difference between orthographic and perspective. So perspective means that things in the distance shrink. So you can see here that that wing back there. However, for these purposes, I think orthographic works best because then you can get a true sense of the scale of things. So let's go ahead and drag this around. So I'm trying to make the wing tip smaller. I want it to be quite a bit smaller. So let's say I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Looks good. Now, in order to sweep this, or excuse me, loft this, we've only got two shapes, so we can click loft. Click one shape, click the next one. What do you know? We've got a wing.